Next up in the list of critical engine factors is p-factor. p-factor is probably the most important of the critical engine factors, if only because it has the most other things depending on it. Here's how we'll get started talking about that. As always, we'll begin by drawing two airplanes. A red airplane and a green airplane. And, as always, the red airplane has its left engine failed while the right engine continues to run. The green airplane has the left engine working and the right engine is the one that's dead. And, as always, we'll draw um, asymmetric thrust. So, asymmetric thrust acts in this direction and tends to turn the left-hand airplane to the left. Uh, asymmetric thrust acts in this direction and tends to turn this airplane to the right. And as always, we have the rudder doing its job to oppose asymmetric thrust. As well as over here, we have the rudder doing its job to oppose asymmetric thrust. Now, where p-factor comes in, if you remember from the p-factor video, is that each blade of a propeller um, experiences a different thrust, whether it's moving forward or backward. That is to say, whether it has a higher or lower angle of attack. We can draw that like this. We'll draw a propeller here, and we'll draw a propeller here. Now. On the aircraft, the downward going blade generates more thrust than the upward going blade, which is really a way of saying the forward moving blade has a higher angle of attack because of its forward motion through the air than the backward going blade. When these aircraft are level, um, that's something to mention actually, uh, this only exists in a climb, P factor. And let's let's make that uh, a standout color. In fact, there we go. P factor exists only in climbs and descents. We're going to talk about climbs. It also exists during a descent, but for the purposes of right now, we can discuss it in a climb. Now, we have uh, more thrust being generated over here and we have less thrust being generated right here. What's the effect? Well, the effect is that the center of thrust, that is to say, the average thrust between uh, all points on the propeller, moves not to the center line, but slightly off to the side of the center line. So you've got the center line of thrust right about there, and you've got the center line of thrust right about there. Uh, same thing on both propellers, uh, but on the red airplane, the one where the left engine has failed, the right engine continues to work, the center line of thrust is further from the center line of the airplane, as you can see. Over here, the center line of thrust is closer to the center line of the airplane. Therefore, you're going to get more turning force because you've got more leverage over here. You've got a greater arm, um, lever arm in fact, uh, trying to turn the airplane to the left than you do trying to turn the airplane to the right. Now that's p-factor in a nutshell. How does it affect the plane? Well, or rather why does it affect the uh, critical engine? If you have, in this case, a greater turning tendency to the left, right here represented as p-factor, And over here you have less of a tendency to turn. Well, you would rather be in the green airplane. That is to say, you would rather have your right engine fail and your left engine continue to work, as opposed to being in the red airplane and have your left engine dead with your right engine working. Reason being, 
your rudder is going to have to work harder here to compensate for this asymmetric thrust plus the greater p-factor. Over here, your rudder is still going to have to counteract asymmetric thrust. It won't have to work as hard to compensate for the very small amount of p-factor which exists if your left engine continues to run. So, that's p-factor. The left engine is more critical because you'll experience greater effect from p-factor trying to turn the airplane than you will if you have a right engine failure. p-factor still exists, you're still having a bad day, but it's not as bad as if your left engine had failed.